Today we got a bunch of TGS trailers that came out. We, we might miss some, but these are the ones we're going to talk about for now. Um, well, first new, the first one we got is The Last Guardian Delay, which kind of sucks. We got Kingdom Hearts 2.8. We got Nier Automata. We got Neo. We got Final Fantasy 15. We got Gravity Rush 2. And we got Resident Evil 7. Um, but before we get into that, let's talk about what we played this week. Um, so I really didn't play a whole lot. I mostly just played, uh, Overwatch, uh, competitive. Okay. Um, trying to get better with, uh, Anna. Oh, really? She's, she's tough. Like, she's really tough to play as because you kind of have to, you have to be, she's one of the more, um, damage dealer, uh, supports. Yeah. So you kind of have to be a little bit more aggressive to a certain extent. Um, yeah, the thing about her though is, is that if you're going to, if you're going to play Anna, you kind of want to, you still actually kind of want to have another support on the team or another healer because she could definitely do heals for sure, yeah. but she's not as fast as a healer of Mercy or Lucio or even Zenyatta. Um, the thing about her though is that she does counter other healers very well. Oh uh, yeah. Like boy, d is it not fun when you're playing Mercy and they have an Anna. <laughs> and she just chucks a anti heal bomb at you, at your team, and you're just like, no. So, so yeah, like I've been practicing with her, getting a little bit better. Um, hopefully, I'm thinking probably because um, I'm I'm actually surprising. I'm at plat. Um, you're plat. Yeah, I'm plat at okay. the moment. So I'm pretty happy about that. So I'm gonna try and probably see if I can stay it around plat uh, for this season, and probably by the end I'm gonna get get a bunch of competitive points. Um, and I will probably have enough to get at least, uh, my, one of my golden weapons. So, mm, get that that. Can. Yep. Gonna get myself a, uh, golden staff for Mercy, um, because she's, she's my favorite. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing this week. I kind of jumped back to Fallout 4 for a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, honestly, if I'm being perfectly honest, I've been doing a lot of tabletop stuff. Okay. So, like, I've been playing Warhammer and D&D &D and stuff like that, so... Nerd. Nerd. Have you seen the um okay you don't watch a lot of competitive uh competitive over Overwatch but there's this uh there's this new composition that's becoming really popular now um it's called it's the triple tank triple support which is very self explanatory so you run Reinhardt, Roadhog and Zarya and then you run Zenyatta, Lucio and Anna. Hmm. No DPS. And then, because, like, Anna's ultimate is insane, right? It yeah. builds so fast. It builds so fast. And yeah. then, like, when you stick Anna's ultimate on a tank, the tank becomes nigh impossible to kill. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're looking at, like, 50% damage reduction, and then you're probably getting a shield from Zarya. And, yeah, so, so how, the, how the comp usually works is that, you know, you just, you just poke, 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 poke until Anna builds her ultimate. And then you stick it onto Reinhardt, because Reinhardt doesn't have to reload, right? You stick yeah. it onto Reinhardt, and then Lucio gives him a speed boost, mm -hmm. and he rushes in, uh, Zarya gives him a little bubble, and then his weapon does like 70, 70 damage per hit. You add 50% to that, so that's like, that's like 100 damage per hit, and it, it AOEs, and he doesn't have to reload, and he's just running around killing people, and it's hilarious. I'm probably yeah. happy. Probably not a lot of fun to play against because <laughs> those tanks are very hard. I mean, first of all, tanks are hard to kill. Yeah, period. But then tanks with three supports behind them are very hard to kill. I was watching this one match where Reinhardt, he gets down to seven health, right? So, you know, he puts up his shield and he's backing up. And then, like, two seconds later, he's at 500 HP. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy shit. Because, you know, like, Anna's grenade, it doubles healing, right? Yeah, exactly. So Anna drops a grenade, Lucio amps it up, Anna shoots him a couple times, bam, he's back up to full health. The tanks are very, very difficult to kill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Um, it's an interesting comp, yeah, for sure. It's a very interesting comp. A lot of people hate it, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, but that's cool. That's cool. I haven't played a lot of Overwatch of late because, I, uh, you know, I like to play in a stack, and most of my friends have... A, that's not entirely true. Me and... um. Yeah, Jason played because uh, mm -hmm. you know they had that they had a little free weekend. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I spent most of the weekend trying to teach Jason how to play the game and stuff. And, mm. and yeah, that was fun. Um, but uh, in general, what did I play? What did I play? Yeah, this is a weird one. Um, oh, oh, oh! I know what I played. Have you heard this game called Lethal League? Yes, I, that does ring a bell. You have. I have heard of it. Yeah. I am. I'm surprised because I, 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 I. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So your Lethal League is, it's such a weird game to explain. It's a 2D, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 2D, okay, so there's a, there's a bunch of different modes, but the mode I played was like baseball, right? So every character yeah. in the game has some kind of bat. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of them, one uses a ping pong, one uses a, um, a, an actual bat. Oh, uh, okay. this, this one character that I use, she uses a giant boom box on a stick. I'm not making this up. Um, and 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 you're 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 playing and uh, your intention in the mode i was playing your your goal is to hit the other player with the ball if you hit mm -hmm. them with the ball they die and it's it's round based so at the start of the match every character has like let's say five health and every time mm -hmm. you get hit by a ball you you're out for that round and then the last person surviving wins it had the game has a lot of I'm gonna sound really old, but it has a lot of attitude. Yeah, you know, it's it's very very hip hop inspired. Like oh, yeah. um, the characters, for example, I mentioned that. Um, it, weirdly that enough, the, it makes me think of Jet Set Radio. I was just about to say, yeah. like you look at it, and it's very very Jet Set Radio, mm -hmm. but it's and the soundtrack is very hip hoppy. Most of the cast is black. The few that aren't mm -hmm. black are like robots or something there's like that. There's a gator. Um, sorry. There's a there's a gator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a gator. His thing is that he can swallow the ball. So yeah, he'll he'll, he'll like swallow it, and then he can like fake you out. It's actually it's a very simple concept, right? You have like three attacks. I think you can hit the ball, you can parry, mm -hmm. and you can jump. And I think that's about it. But there's a lot of depth to it. Um, mm -hmm. because the more you hit the ball, the faster it moves. So there's a little like uh, speaker at the bottom of the screen, and you have to pay attention to the speaker because when it drops, it means that your opponent has let go of the ball. Right. So it's so it's time for you to start swinging. Um, um, there's a couple of other really really like I just I just really I just started picking it up, so I didn't really learn a lot of the more uh, new a lot of the nuances of the game. But yeah, you yeah. can like bounce it off the wall uh, to build up momentum. Um, you, every character has like a special move. Um. Each characters have like passives, you know, like the character I played, she could double jump. Um, it's it's really, really cool. Like I was surprised at how much depth there are a couple of modes too. There's like a mode where you have to score. You know, yeah. there's 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 like a circle on each side of the wall and that, that, that mode is like two on two so there's like, there's like a circle on each side of the of the wall and then you smack it you smack it into the circle to score um yeah. we're actually playing on fight sticks <laughs> yeah because yeah. in a lot of ways it is it's it's kind of a fighting game in a weird way it has it, it has a lot of stuff that fighting game players will appreciate this is this is definitely true mm. and uh yeah man it was it was it was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, whenever you eliminate someone, their body like ragdolls. Oh, yeah. Bit, it's, right? it's you fantastic. can like smack the body around. <laughs> so, and it does not. I think it builds you bar. But yeah. I, I, I generally just did it for, for BM. Yeah. So, so yeah, I kill my teammate. I kill my, I kill one of the enemies, and then I just like smack. I like lob his body into the air and and like smack it out of the arena. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. It was, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Like, if this game came out on... I probably wouldn't pay money for it, if I'm being completely honest. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, like, uh, if... I mean, if, if it was, like, on sale on PSN, I'd, I'd, I'd consider picking it up, because I, I had a lot of fun with it. Now, I'm not sure if it has enough depth for me to play this game for, like, a while. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was a, it was a good... De it was a good bit of fun. I also... Oh, I, st I started playing... I started playing Divinity, too. Ah... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So funny story, funny story. Wow. So I, 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 I boot up the game and I start building my characters and then I get to the point where I'm going to like, you know, give them skill points and stuff. And I realize mm -hmm. that my laptop is updating, so I can't look up the video of the character build that I was planning on copying. Uh... So then it stops playing Divinity. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, that's literally you, how it goes every time I try to you play You are like the most, like just... Play the game. You see, I can't do it. Like, here's the thing: is that I, whenever I play, whenever oh. I play RPGs, especially, I always try to optimize my characters, right? 
like with The Witcher 3, for example. In fact, with most RPGs I play, if not all of them, if I haven't decided on my build when I start playing the game, I'll get to like level 10 and I'll be I'll be sitting on, on, on skill points that I just never spent. Like The Witcher 3, I think actually if I boot up my level 77 character on The Witcher, I have like 50 skill points I haven't spent yet. <laughs> I just, because I always want to optimize, right? Um, and then a lot of times, that's just effort. You know, go out, find a video, find a video of a build that you actually like and all that stuff, right? And yeah. then, so, like, with Divinity, that's really what's killing me with Divinity. Oh, my God. That's really what's killing me with Divinity because like, I'm just looking. I swear, I swear to God, at this point, I'm going to tell you how to make a character. <laughs> Just so that you don't have that excuse anymore. Okay. No, 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 no. I promise. I promise. By the next podcast, I would have actually started playing Divinity. Yeah. yeah. Well, send like, me a text because okay, so, uh, I, I, I told you what happened the first time, right? I built yeah. my characters and I actually built them, you know. And then I realized that I didn't change the names. You named them so, improperly, so it's like, yeah, yeah. So the girl was Roderick and the guy was Scarlet. And I, I, like, I would have ran with that. Like I don't, I'm a, like, I don't know if I can change the names later, and I'm a hundred percent sure this is going to bother me. For the Man. entirety of this playthrough, I, like, so, dude, I, sp I I named my character, I named Titus in Final Fantasy Dopey, and I oh. just ran with it, and it was fucking it's, fantastic. You actually meant to name him Dopey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I this mean, is it's true. pretty fitting considering Titus. Yeah. All that stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I promise. I promise. Scouts honor this time next week. I would have. One sec, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, this time next week, I, I, I would have started playing um, Divinity, like, proper, proper. Proper, proper. Cool, cool. Maybe I can join your game, and then I can help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing that I did wrong that first time, was that I built it, but I built it in offline mode. Oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, with this new one, I, well, I was I put it I put it in online, and then I was like, oh, wait, I don't know what my build is. So, then I backed out. But when I, when I make my third game, I will, <laughs> I'll actually... I'll actually put it in, like, online, so then, yeah, you can hop into my game and start, you know, Sweet. causing me problems. Sweet. You should, honestly, if, if I would make a suggest, I think a good team comp for that game is you, one player should be, like, a fighter or, like, a melee-based guy, and mm. the other character should be a healer. Mm. For sure. I was planning on doing, because I really like the, the rogues, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, like I like my character in um, in Skyrim was always a rogue. I um, would say be careful because I played a rogue and rogues are really hard to play. In yeah, which is another reason why I want to make sure that my build is correct because I don't want to now build a character who like late game is garbage. You feel me? Yeah. Especially since this game does not sound like a type of game that is very forgiving if you build your character incorrectly. So are you starting to see where all these issues are coming from? Yeah, I know, but just. Ugh. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> hopefully next week we'll we'll get a session in. And that'll be okay, fun. sounds right. good. So you want to get into some news? Let's get into some news. Okay. We'll start off with some great news. Some great... So the Last Guardian, you know, finally got a release date. It's coming out in October next. But oh no, actually no, it's been delayed until December. So uh... yeah. Okay, this this kind of me. I kind of read this and I kind of just sighed, but then I went, as long as it's coming out this year. If it's if it gets delayed again to right, 2017, right. then I will be mad. Because I'm at, I'm at the same point with like Final Fantasy 15, where it's like the game has already been this long in development. Yeah. I would rather it take a little bit longer and just be a better game. This is I I I, I agree. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out is that I um the more I think about this, because they also released like some um some footage, and as I was watching the footage, mm -hmm. I feel like this game is is in trouble actually and not from a gameplay point of view obviously it's too early no one really knows yeah. right but i feel like from a reception point of view i think this game is 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 because here's the thing right i think I, I think you know feel free to disagree but i think i think i'm a pretty reasonable reasonable um guy when it comes to criticizing um video games yeah oh um, my god that, my that only thing. my only caveat to that is that we also had the discussion about how you just generally don't like those kind of games, period. <laughs> let, let me let me let me get to my point though. Okay, I'll let yeah, keep going. Keep okay, going. so yeah, so 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 I'm watching the gameplay, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 um, what's this thing called? And the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, I don't see where the ten years went. You know, I'm I'm watching the gameplay, and I'm not focusing on the fact that this is a game. You know, I'm not focusing on the gameplay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to 
see what caused it to take so long. And you know, like, no. Nah, to be fair, I'm pretty sure it was the AI because because yeah. the impression I've gotten is that you're gonna have to train the giant bird thing. That, so, like from from like a core from accounts that I've read uh, is that essentially, uh, uh, essentially there were two things. One is that when they when they released the game, they the problem was they couldn't get it. They wanted a steady frame rate. Mm. That was a big thing. They wanted a steady frame rate. They wanted it to be smooth. And the pro because even though I loved. Um, Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, that frame rate. The frame rate would chug. But in a weird way, I kind of thought that was kind of awesome. In a weird, weird way. I don't know how to explain that. I know, it's stupid, but honestly, but but it's fixed. There's, a, there's an HD collection, it doesn't chug, it's fixed, right? Yeah. So, like, I, I totally get that. So they want a, a smoother frame rate for this game. And the other thing is that, yes, the AI, they just, they, they couldn't program the AI to have the level of fidelity that they wanted with the PS3. So yeah. that was kind of the two things. And from what I can tell, essentially, they did have to kind of sc a scrap and restart. And that's why the development took a lot extra, like a lot, a little bit long, obviously longer, because <laughs> it was basically like, all right, we're not making this game for the PS3 anymore. We're making this game for the PS4 now. Yeah. Time to actually start from scratch. And that's why this feels like a, a long ass time. Because this game was announced in 2008, I think. No, you know, come on. Was it seven? About six. It was six. Was it yeah. six? I thought it was it's six. All right, it's yeah, six. it was six. Because The Last Guardian was announced before the PS4 came out. Yeah, I know. It was, yeah, it was the PS3. Sorry, sir. I meant The Last Guardian was announced before the PS3 came out. No, no, two thousand. No, I'm like, no, that can't be true. Because I specifically remember having a PS3 when I saw that trailer. Okay, yeah, 2007. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, but still. No, I told you. ten years. But I, yeah, so I'm watching the trailer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a part where he's supposed to, like, climb this chain. Okay, and first of all, like, there's a lot of clipping. <laughs> and, and, and it's just bothering me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, ten years later... And this kid is clipping through the chain. And I'm like, like you, you feel me? And, and it's, no, it's, no, it's, I, I totally, I totally get it. Like, there's no. This... To be fair, clipping actually is one of my pet peeves. Like, it, it bothers me. Like, Birdie, mm -hmm. Birdie in Street Fighter Five, the fact that on his, on his, um, his, his uh, main menu pose, his chain clips through his, uh, his necklace. That kills me. Like, I'm like, you guys didn't even have to use that animation. You could have picked a completely different animation uh... and just avoid clipping altogether. But yeah, man, like, like he's climbing up on this chain and he's clipping. He's actually, like, going through the chain, right? Mm -hmm. Then he picks up this, like, thing to feed to the bird and his hands are clipping through it. And I'm like, I'm like, dudes, you know? Um, so, 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 you know, we'll see. We'll yeah, see. Yeah. Um, I I um I'm watching this with bated breath because good God, if this game comes out and it is not the tits, <laughs> it is not all that and a bag of chips. I'm I, I'm looking I think for the eco might actually like close down because it's like <laughs> yeah, the, there is there is a lot. Yeah, they are gambling a lot on this game getting being well received. I'm more curious as to I want to know because like basically I'm thinking like okay, look like. I, I played a game, like, a Journey. I always think of Journey as, like, this spiritual Team Ico game that just yeah. Team Ico never made, right? I was gonna it, <laughs> And that game is short, and yeah, there's there's things like graphical things, like there's clipping from, obviously, in that game as well, and there's, there's small graphical errors from time to time, but this game still looks good, and the build-up to the finale with the, the, with the music and the visuals made that game like fantastic i played through that game like three different times now bear oh. in mind it's a short ass game don't don't uh, don't get it mixed up but i enjoyed that game a lot for the yeah of you know quote unquote the journey that yeah. I, I took and as long as if I, if i get into this game and yeah there's gonna be little things there might there might be clipping and stuff like that but if i come out of it and the journey was worth it then i'll be yeah i'll be happy i'll be content you know the bird is going to die, right? I, okay. There have been jokes about that, and it's actually curious because this is a bit of a spoiler. I actually don't know because they had... In Shadow Colossus, there's a moment where you're you're jumping... Um, you're, you're riding your horse, right? 
Yeah. To the final boss. You ride him across a bridge, and the bridge starts to collapse. And the horse essentially throws you forward so you can reach the cliffside and sacrifices himself to... Oh, spoiler alert, Tanner. Yeah, no, I said spoiler. I said spoiler <laughs> before I said that. But here's the thing. In the end credits, he shows up. Really? <laughs> he shows up and he's just limping. And you're like, oh, how did you survive this fall? That's you are crazy. the most badass horse ever. Uh, like, But that's what I mean is that I don't know. I honestly don't know. It could go either way, but yeah, most likely he's probably going to die. And he's probably going <laughs> to die. But, uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, the gameplay looks cool. Um, we'll see. We shall, uh, yeah, we shall, yeah, we shall see when the game launches in December. In December. Uh, please just come out in December. I'm going to buy this game regardless. I don't, I don't care. I will be but buying I mean, I this game. You have to buy this game. Well, I have to buy this game. I, I, have, been the, I have been the sole source of... Last Guardian <laughs> info on yeah, this podcast. I'm definitely not buying this. <laughs> no, I know, I know, that's fine. But it's like, yeah, t- totally. I, I totally know what you mean, though. I just, just please come out in 2016. Just, just do that for me, guys. Come on, come on. Um, our next trailer, we got Kingdom Hearts 2.8, and we got a bunch of new, um, like clips from the. It's kind of funny. People are talking about the ba- the actual experience which is the prequel to 3 mm. um because there's dream drop uh, sorry dream drop distance hd which is just an hd port of the oh, oh shit sorry yeah hello hello can you hear me yeah i can hear you okay cool oh okay weird um so it's like um excuse me it's basically an hd port of the 3ds game dream drop distance you essentially have what appears to be a movie on this disc, which is okay. a uh, 3D animated movie of the events that I that are kind of connected to the Keyblade War, and finally, um, the last game is you get to play as Aqua in the events after Birth by Sleep. So yeah. it's kind of interesting because, like, they're they this game is essentially in a lot of ways it's kind of like the 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 hype game. Essentially, it's like all right, get hyped for Kingdom Hearts three, you know. Yeah. And that's sort of that's what it's saying. hype enough already. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it it, it looks it looks good, and it, it, people are comparing this to Ground Zeroes, right? Mm. To Metal Gear Solid Five, and I'm like, the the difference is is that this game has more content than Ground Zeroes. <laughs> there's a full game in this, you know. Obviously, there's the preview game and the movie, but there's also uh, an HD port of another game that's important in this yeah. disc. So it's way better as far as value goes than, like, Ground Zeroes was. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm perfectly fine with it. But, boy, you are going to have to do some work to figure out what the hell is going on in 3. Oh, yeah. I've given up at this point. You've given I'm, up. Like, yeah. No, I know. because I, I would have bought it. But I'm like, at this point, no, 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 no. No, you see, you see, it's happened twice now. It happened with The Witcher 3 and it happened with Dark Souls 3, right? Where I got, I got into a series at the end. And then it kind of hurt the the final experience. I mean, only slightly. Yeah. But but yeah. So yeah, I'm like, I'm not doing it again. No, but, that's that's. Especially fine. with Kingdom Hearts, because like at the very least, Dark Souls plot didn't carry over, and and, it, and very little of The Witcher Three's plot carried over. Mm. This game, holy shit! It's yeah. Oh. I've watched at least I've watched a couple recaps twice, and there's still like important events that you kind of. It's kind of one of those things where um you do have to sit down and watch cutscenes, and I may have to talk about that for um for another game on our list but concluded uh, does not begin to do this game's plot yeah justice. no it is it is convoluted that i i cannot disagree about that but yeah. there is kind of an interesting fact that this is a this is like a 10 year story <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah oh we also got a release date uh oh, the yeah. game is going to release in north america and europe january 24th 2017 for the ps4 um and uh yeah yeah, yeah, so Kingdom Hearts 2.8. Yeah. Excited. Definitely Look excited. <laughs> um, next game on our list that we're oh, super excited for, we also got another trailer for, Near Automata. Yeah, Near, Near Automata. So Near Automata also gets a release date, but only a mm. Japanese release date, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, it's coming February 23rd. Yes, February 23rd yeah. in Japan. Uh, no no North American released it yet. And Probably very, the same. Very little, like, oh, for the love of God, sorry. Um, I just, I just, because I, I, I set the videos to automatically mute so I can watch them 
and it doesn't play, so right, you, know, yeah. you guys can't hear it, but it's not muting for some goddamn reason. So anyway, um, no gameplay though, which oh for the love <laughs> of God. Maybe you should just pause the video. There's a there's a thought. I paused the video. I hit the mute button, but I guess I didn't hit it hard enough. And then I hit play, and it was like, no, no, hold these nuts, fool. But um, uh, no gameplay though, which is weird. They, like here's the thing: if this game wasn't by Platinum, I'd actually be getting worried about. And if, and if I hadn't liked the gameplay that I've seen so far, mm -hmm. I would actually be a little worried because of how little gameplay they've shown and how much it seems. They are refusing to show us gameplay. They released like three trailers at TGS and none of them had any gameplay in it. It's like... Mm -hmm. I know why. I know why now. Why? I can talk about that. Because I watched a full playthrough of Nier. Like the first Nier, essentially. Yeah. And here's the thing. So for was, would you say that Nier is a... This Nier Automata is the sequel to Nier, right? Yeah, but the gameplay is completely different. Um, Except, no... It's the fifth game. What? Yeah. So apparently how this near goes is that there's Drakengard, Drakengard 2, and Drakengard 3. And one of the crazy endings in 3 spawned the alternate universe in which Nier became. Uh... So here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. At first, I, when I heard this, I was, oh man, I don't know if this is worth it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch Nier anyway, and I, I am at the fact where it's like, yeah, this, this game is, it's worth, if, if you do anything, you need to watch some of the cutscenes, or at the very least, I can just give you the cliff notes, because boy, is there some really interesting stuff in Nier. Okay. Like, it is really, really good, and, and the thing is, is that people... It is, it's really great with the near fan base is very quiet about spoilers because oh. of how good these spoilers are. And that's why when I was watching that playthrough, I was going, oh my god, that is insane. Like, half the time. And they're, they're like really smart twists and turns. And it's really, really interesting and really, really cool. So I think part of the reason why they're being quiet about this game to a certain extent is because they don't want people to see the twists. Okay. So I can but understand that reason. That, 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 that contradicts what I said, though. Because, like I said, they're not showing gameplay. They're showing story. And, like, if you want to hide the story, they just show gameplay. You feel me? Yeah, but even then, there's also stuff where they showed this gameplay trailer, and then people went, hey, wait a minute, that's something from Nier. You yeah, know? but then, like, at the end of the day, you're more likely to spoil stuff with a story trailer than but, a gameplay trailer. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying that, like, even, I'm just comparing, like, think about this, this quote-unquote story trailer, right? Yeah. It, we only got, like, very brief flashes of, yeah. like, stuff right so it's not enough it's enough for you to go hey wait a minute what's that but not enough to go all right because like another trailer that we saw that was very like all right we're just telling you big parts of the story was that the final fantasy 15 trailer which we'll get to after but that was more on the nose and i found that i found that the way near automatized marketing is because you, you want to keep these sec you want to keep these secrets and i totally get that now and I'm like, yeah, you can keep these secrets and still show us gameplay. Like, I like, I don't, I don't feel like it's, it's, um, I don't feel like it's binary. How it has to be one or the other. I think you can do both. You can keep all this. I don't give a damn about the story. I'm probably gonna skip all the cutscenes. Yeah, gonna... see, that's the thing, and that's why I'm gonna break into your house and break your desk because if you <laughs> but, skip but, the but cutscenes, but but like, even if I did care game, about the story, I, will... right? I feel like you can, you can keep entire plot under wraps but still show us okay. like gameplay you know show us show us how the combat system works show us well how the combat system works. <laughs> show us um, okay you know you don't want to show us a bunch of weapons that's fine mm -hmm. you know show us like a few weapons focus on the combat but like they're showing nothing nothing now to be fair we're still a little early into tgs yeah, yeah, um, exactly. the actual i don't think the, the actual trade show itself has started yet i think it starts as a 
you know, the day after we record this podcast. So maybe, you know, yeah. it's going like, to be like... Like we, a, we said at the beginning of this podcast that we're not going to get everything. Like, yeah. if anything, next podcast, we'll probably pick some stuff that like we clean missed. up and oh, stuff. Yeah, clean up yeah. and stuff. Yeah, but like, you know, maybe, maybe there'll be like some floor demos or something like that. But as of right now, like, they've shown so little gameplay. And it's like, here's the thing, you know? Like you said, this is a sequel to... I mean, this is a sequel to, to games that no one really bought, right? Mm -hmm. So... No one can, like, most people don't care about the story of this game because most people aren't invested in this franchise. Right? Sure. <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, people who know nothing about Nier. Yeah, yeah. which is, like, a vast majority of people. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, I yeah, that. so, so for me, I'm like, what is going to sell this game is the gameplay. And you're not showing it to anyone, you know? Like, like the, the, the average gamer will hear of Nier and they might not even know what it is because mm -hmm. most of the trailers that they've seen, they've, they've shown us two gameplay trailers. The mm -hmm. one at the Paris game show last year and then there was that boss battle at E3, both of which were awesome and the soundtrack oh, yeah. was also really good in both. But then, like, like, like give us, give us... Give us something, guys. Um, uh, anyway, you know, like near. I'm still excited for near. I'm yeah. still anxiously waiting to hear about the um, the 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 worldwide the worldwide release date. Yeah. Um, it, the the it's coming out in Japan in February. And to be completely honest, and okay, okay, this is a little bit of a deja vu. But to be completely honest, I'm glad it isn't coming to North America in February because February is already packed. It's packed. Yeah, let's hope last February doesn't repeat itself this year. But yeah, because right now I've got Persona, I've got like Horizon, and, mm -hmm. and maybe I'll even get um, For Honor. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, For Honor looks good. It's just uh, I I'm trying to convince one of my friends to like pick it up as well. So because it's like I find if I'm gonna buy a multiplayer game, it's I have more enjoyment. Multiple people to play with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. And, uh, the, the, the other game uh, um, is uh, Neo. Neo is also coming out in February, February 9th to be specific. And uh, yeah, we got a little bit of a story trailer, but it's in Japanese. So hold, hold that, hold, hold that, that down, <laughs> America. Well, here's um, the weird thing. That's uh, one of the trailers that I saw. It was like mostly in Japanese, but then one of the characters was speaking English. Oh, yeah, I, th I think I saw the same trailer. It threw me off because, like, they put like Japanese subtitles at that one moment, and I was like, "Huh, that's weird." And because it uh, makes me think, because it's like this is a weird thing where, like, um, sometimes, like, this is a weird thing with the Dark Souls games. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I, I'm not sure if this is the exact the case, but I think the English voice actors actually voice the characters, like they're like like in, for the Japanese version. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's um. So because okay, that's that... why that's why like when you're seeing when you're seeing Japanese trailers for Dark Souls three, it was still in English. Like the audio was still in English. So you kind of oh, go, okay. well, wait a minute. So. Okay. But yeah, Neo is one of these games where like I um I'm on the fence. Mm -hmm. Like if okay if review I'm I'm actually just gonna wait for for other people to. I'm gonna wait for other people's opinions on the game. I played because they had another alpha a little while back mm -hmm. and i played it and it's a lot better they balanced yeah. it out you have a little more health you don't die as easily anymore um mm -hmm. and i could definitely see myself getting into it uh the um but but like i said this is one of those games that i'm still skeptical about i can see this being awesome or i can see this being terrible because right, yeah. it still kind of feels like it's made by people who want to who, they're like, oh wow, this from software guys. They made this cool Dark Souls games. We want to make something like that, and it just mm -hmm. feels like, like they're copying, you know. And you know, like you know, good artists mm -hmm. borrow, great artists steal, right? There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with copying, but like it feels like they are not copying well. Um, there are certain things that, yeah, I think like it's very clear. Okay, they're copying this or whatnot, but I think there are things that I do have to give them credit. Like they're adding some stuff that is not dark souls like yeah custom custom moves for weapons that is that's not a dark souls thing dark souls is like you pick up a weapon and you ha you were stuck with that move list yeah they also had the stances so you have like three stances i think i can't remember mm -hmm. how many but yeah one stance um increases your um your offense one is like more middle of the ground and one increases your speed 
uh one increases your, your damage at the um at the cost of speed one's more middle and then one increases your speed at the cost of damage um yeah there's there's interest there, there, there's this other thing that you that you do where if you hit this one like whenever you do an attack it consumes stamina because dark souls uh however whenever you hit it's, if there's, there's, a, there's a specific button that you hit and if you time the button right it boosts your stamina regeneration so it's like at the end of every combo you do bam 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 you hit that button yeah. and you like it's 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 like a just frame you hit it at the right timing and then bam you get your stamina right back so mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool um yeah which is what i'm saying is that i can see this game being awesome i can see that's that's, that's why i'm like i'm just gonna sit back and wait for the reviews you know every yeah. reviews come out and everybody's saying that oh yeah this game is awesome if you like dark souls pick this game up then i'll pick it up like no no questions asked. it's also coming out on my birthday so <laughs> Um, hints, hints, nudge, like, nudge, nudge, all that nudge. good stuff. All but right, if, if the game comes out and everybody that plays it is like that, yeah, yeah, if you like Dark Souls, play Dark Souls, don't play this game, then I just won't buy it, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. It's pretty much one of those situations. Hmm. Yeah, I... Yeah. Like, I mean, like, it looks, it looks good, and there are, like... I feel like a lot of people are under the pretense, like, oh, this is just, like, a, a Dark Souls ripoff. Or people are saying, like, oh, this is just a Dark Souls, like, copy, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah they're obviously, yeah, sure. They are taking a lot of uh, concepts and influences and design choices from Dark Souls. But there are a lot of stuff that they're bringing to the table that are different. And that's the thing that I'm most excited about it. I'm more excited for how this game is different than Dark Souls. Oh, yeah, than, same here. Yeah, same here. and how it is uh, similar. I also really, uh, one of the other mechanics I really think is cool is the, uh, I think it's like the Guardian mechanic. And oh, yeah, yeah, those spirits. Yeah, those spirits, where you get to actually choose your spirit, and when you activate it, each spirit has, like, a different function. Yeah. So I think that's really, really neat. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited for this game, but yeah, I am gonna be a little bit hesitant before uh, purchase. That's yeah, that was what disappointed me about the um, about the original uh, beta was that I played it uh, oh, alpha, whatever. Well, okay. I played it and like I was looking forward to seeing the differences, you know, mm-hmm. and there were very little. So I was like, and then you know the game was actually imbalanced, so it I was, was like, yeah, really yeah, shit. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting closer to release. I um. I'm, I'm I'm intrigued and I'm cautiously cautiously optimistic. So um, yeah, you know February 9th, we'll see. All we'll right. See. Um, we also got a Final Fantasy 15 trailer, uh, big old story trailer showing um, you know the rise and fall of Noctis and his buddies and friends. Um, showed off the slimy villain. Uh, I think his name is Adzerin. Adzerin. Is Sorry. it the, is it the mysterious stranger guy? He's the mysterious stranger guy with the fedora. And the flamboyant jacket. Oh, he he is. I'm not gonna lie though. I saw the I saw the uh, English voice actor portraying him, and he just he sounds like the most slimiest like <laughs> villain ever, like like the like snake oil salesman, <laughs> and I kind of love that. So I'm actually really excited to see him as a villain because the nothing there's nothing more lame than when your villain is uninteresting, you know? Yeah. Like a game with a boring villain is just ugh. Yeah, what's funny is that the whole time this game has been coming out, I've been like, wow, this isn't a Final Fantasy. All the characters have practical outfits. (laughs) And then they reveal the villain, and I'm like, there's my. There we go. There's my Final Fantasy. (laughs) Oh my god, he just he just he just smacked a woman. Well, he's definitely the winner. The villain. I wasn't sure, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly, um, they, you know, it was a story trailer. They didn't really show. They showed a little bit of gameplay at the end. You know, uh, all the transportation and whatnot. Yeah, uh, you gotta have your chocobo. You gotta yeah. have it. Um, and the freaking car is the most ridiculous thing ever. It looks so out of place. It's so out of place, but I love it. I the love car, it. the boat, the train. It's such a weird setting. Like, I'm not hitting on it. I actually quite like it. You know, mm-hmm. it's a nice But it's game. weird. It is weird. It's so weird. It's so weird. I'm like, this is Final Fantasy. What's with all this modern stuff? And then you see him riding a chocobo on, like, an actual highway. And I'm like, this looks so weird. This, this so weird. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, November 29th. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited. Um... I'm excited to see all the responses. Yeah, like, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting uh, how people respond to this game. One I, thing I, of note, though, is that in Japan, you know, like, consoles are actually dying in Japan, right? Um, mm-hmm. 
the, the console market in Japan is not it's not very it's not very good right now. Um, it's mostly handhelds. Like I think the Vita has outsold the PS4. No, to be fair, the Vita has been out long out, but, yeah, still, but still, that that should show you how poorly income like that should show what you how a, poorly. What a PS4 weird is. place to live where the Vita outsells the PS4. Yeah, because I mean, like the PS4 has out, outsold the Vita in like these first three months in North America, right? Yeah. And like almost two years later, the Vita is outselling the PS4. And the Vita is actually not doing too poorly in Japan. Sony just announced like a bunch of brand new colors for. for but I digress. Anyway, yeah, the yeah. point is that people are interested to see if Final Fantasy what effect Final Fantasy 15 is going to have on the console markets in Japan, you know? Because mm-hmm. okay, because here's the thing, right? And, and I feel like the fact that the console market is struggling in Japan isn't entirely, um, isn't, 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 isn't being completely honest, right? Because here's mm-hmm. the thing, the, the, the Xbox One has no hope in Japan, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. I think even Microsoft have acknowledged that and they've just given up, right? Yeah. Then the Wii U is a piece of crap. So, so like, that's not gonna sell well because it's not selling well anywhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it 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 so like the success of consoles in Japan lies solely on the shoulders of the PS4. So mm-hmm. I feel like you know the fact that consoles are quote unquote struggling in Japan isn't being completely uh, candid. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to see how Final Fantasy 15 is going to affect the PS4 sales and you know yeah. just console sales in general. Well, the other thing is that when you think about it, this. Um... Because I, I I forget we got did we get a release date for the slim I forget. Yeah, we got a release date for the slim. Um, is it this I, year? Is it before it's December? This month. this month, yeah, yeah, September, yeah. Because this will be a big deal. Because if it's like you know, get your PS4 and your copy of Final Fantasy 15 at the same time, that's gonna yeah. be a big deal for. I think they even have a limited edition Final uh, Final Fantasy 15 PS4. I can't remember yeah. if it was a slim or a pro. Probably I, a pro, I, if yeah. I had to guess. <laughs> But uh, but still, like that's a big that's a big deal because I guess this will be a big game for the holiday market. So yeah yeah yeah, like, so, yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I hope hopefully it goes well because I think a lot of people, some and me included, is like we just want Final Fantasy be, to be good again. <laughs> we just want to put all that thirteen bullshit behind us and move forward. That's that's yeah. sort of where a lot of people are at. <laughs> big Final Fantasy great again. Uh, and uh, next on the list, we got Gravity Rush 2, the game that I can consistently play at all the conventions. <laughs> and nobody touches it. Yeah, yeah. Touches yeah. It. Um, it looks cool. The trailer looks looks cool, looks interesting. But yeah, at this point, it's just... I, I feel like they should. I feel like they should have like a demo or something of this game to let people yeah. get their hands on it. Because... Well, technically they did. <laughs> oh, I'm... I mean, like you had to pay for that demo. <laughs> That's not a demo. <laughs> That's an investment. Like That's what are you talking about? I was. I didn't go there for the demo. I went there for the experience. It was just a happy thing that was just there. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like they should have like a demo in the PSN store because, like, I mean, you know, people are gonna see Gravity Rush two, and a lot of people aren't, aren't gonna know that there was a Gravity Rush one. I'm yeah. actually surprised that they call it Gravity Rush two. Um, you know, because because yeah. usually when you when you're in this situation where the first game wasn't very successful, you rebrand the second one. You know, you call it something crazy like you know Gravity Rush Extreme or something well, like that. Well, I think that. isn't this game called Gravity Rush Days? No, it's called Gravity Days in Japan. So it is rebranded technically. No, I mean you know how you know you know how, no like Gravity Rush One was called Gravity Days One in Japan and then oh, Gravity Rush. Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you, you you know how it goes sometimes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um. Uh. So yeah, yeah. But it looks cool. Like I, you know. I, I'd really like because like me personally, I bought the first grab well, I didn't buy it, you know, PlayStation Plus. I got it for free. But um, mm-hmm. I'd really like to like mess around with the gameplay a little bit to see how much better it feels because because like the combat was ass in the first one and not the good kind of ass either. Um, yeah, the gameplay in the first one was ass. So I I. I'm skeptical about buying the second one for that very reason. One cool thing, though, is that uh, is that they're going to finally reveal the origins of cats in Gravity Rush 2. Mm-hmm. And then everybody else watching the trailer just didn't give a damn because they don't even know who Cat is. Um, Obviously, people I'm, who played one, they probably did. But the, yeah, yeah no, I, know, I know what you mean. A lot of the new people are like, who is Cat? <laughs> Yeah, 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 I'm actually worried about this game. I mean, no, like, Sony have absolutely nothing coming out this fall. Um, so, 
you know, the fact that there's not a lot of competition might help the game. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I am kind of worried. I don't think this game is going to do very well. Because like you mentioned, no one plays a game at trade shows because no one cares, you know? And, and yeah, you know, we'll, well, it's we'll also, see. I hope it's, I'm wrong. It's, it's also the thing where it's like, it's an anime game. Like, let's, it, it is. It's like, very anime. It's, a, it's an anime game with a sort of weird Paris flair to it. Yeah. Um, and... I really like it. I think it's cool, but I'm a weirdo, so... <laughs> so it's like... Also, it's like, if if there's, you know, obviously Joe Schmo walks into a convention and goes, oh, I can play this weird anime game where I can go play Forza. I'm gonna go <laughs> play Forza. And that just makes me really sad. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's like, that that is just the reality of the situation. Honestly, I was kind of happy because it meant that I could just play the game multiple times. So there it is. There it is. Always on time. <laughs> well, that is, that is what clocks are for. Last I checked. <laughs> um, and then last on our list, we've got Resident Evil Seven. We got a more full blown uh, uh, gameplay trailer. Boy, they are going full uh, Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. It is. It is like they're not even trying to hide it. Now, to be fair, you know. Good artist borrow, good artist steal, all that good stuff. Um, it's it's disgusting. I'm definitely not gonna play this. Um, so like just, like just I, I, I mean disgusting in a good way. Just FYI, you know, yeah. like the the dinner. Oh, for the love <laughs> of, you know what? I give up. Anyway, um, I'm definitely like I. I mean, at least the trailer looks scary. So you yes, know. Yes. Yes. And you know, I I. For all the criticism I've I've thrown in Capcom's direction, and God knows I've thrown some criticism. Oh boy, have you! At the very least, they're trying something different with mm-hmm. this game. You know, maybe maybe this will be the kick in the nuts that the franchise needs because Lord knows it need it needs one right now. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, yeah, they. I mean, it's, it's it's something different. You know, I don't think we've ever had a big budget horror game that because yeah. most big budget horror games take their inspiration from japan you know yeah. so you have like grudge ring type shit but then I, I don't think we've ever had many we don't have many big budget horror games that are inspired by american horror so yeah yeah texas yeah. chainsaw massacre is american right yeah i know yeah texas is american yeah oh yeah the the texas yeah chainsaw massacre of course it's american you dumbass <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because there's like literally the scene where they're sitting at the table and eating really fucked up food. Yeah. Um, that is like completely ripped from the first movie. Oh, you've uh, seen the first movie? Oh yeah, it's fucking freaky. Uh, okay. My favorite, my favorite uh, review of it is that you know instead of being like, boy, these uh, actors can really you know act as like crazy people, the yeah. review goes, boy, these crazy people can sure act. <laughs> 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 so. Yeah, it's a it's a really disturbing, creepy film, um, and uh, I'm I'm kind of I, I, there's also an interesting how this is kind of it seems to be pulling away from the um, sciency side of Resident Evil and, and going towards more of a like almost supernatural like um, it, it's weird it's weird it's like it does feel like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre um, game essentially. Yeah, um, but I, I do think it's really good, and um, I think there's going to be a lot of really creepy moments in this game, and I think it's going to be a nice, refreshing change of form for Resident Evil. Yeah, um, I'm really interested to see how this is going to play out. Cause, oh yeah, for sure. Cause, yeah, the, the the past the past couple of installments have not been have not no. been forgiving have yeah. have not been uh, well good. Let's yeah, just go. yeah, and we we don't talk about Resident Evil uh, Recorps. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We do, we oh, do. sorry. Uh, real quick, um, before mm-hmm. before we get to our uh, question of the day, yep. it's just a little because uh, you know I'm gonna keep hyping this up until the until the eventual showdown in December. Oh boy, here we go. But yeah, just a little a, a little bit of news because you know I, I I like to be unbiased. The Battlefield One beta drew over 13 million players. It, it's the largest beta in EA's history. And um, so, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there, let Tanner know, you know, because okay. like whenever uh, you, I, I did this off 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 um, off podcast. But yeah, whenever I hear stats that, you know, support my points, that you, you got it, got to spread the word that Infinite Warfare is going to outsell Battlefield. Oh. I spread the word. But then, you know, whenever I see stuff that can give Tanner a little bit of confidence too, I decide to let him know. One thing I want to add, though, is that 
it would be so hilarious, right? Because like for the entire Xbox 360 generation, and I apologize, mm-hmm. this is complete. This is a complete digression. Mm-hmm. But for the entire Xbox 360 generation, Microsoft owned Call of Duty, right? Yeah. So like this gen comes, and Sony they get you know like the PS4 comes out, it's selling the Xbox One, and then they, they you know they finally get Call of Duty, and you know they get like exclusive DLC for Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. So it would be so hilarious if after all of that. You know, Battlefield One comes out and it becomes the first Battlefield to outsell in Call of Duty because Microsoft have exclusive stuff with Battlefield yeah. One now. So that would actually that would actually make me laugh. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna feel sorry for Sony. You know, 40 million PS4s, but yeah. that would be pretty hilarious. That would if, be you know, pretty hilarious. That, they finally uh, got it, and then they got it right as it was losing. It's kind power. of funny, yeah, that it's like you got you got the license. At this point, you really needed the license like five games ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, but uh, but yeah. Sorry for that quick digression. I just I really wanted to say that on podcast. But yeah, um, onto our question of the day, or am I forgetting something? Uh, nope, that's it. Uh, question of the day. Go for it. So from the amazing J Street, shout out to J Street. The Streets. amazing J Street. Yeah, he asks, what region makes the best RPGs? Ooh, baby. Ooh, I feel like me and Tanner are going to disagree on this yeah, one. Yeah, we too. probably are. What so, yeah, mean? I'll let you go first, Tanner. Oh, I want you to go first. Okay, okay, okay. So, I'm going to say North America. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And I can't believe I'm actually saying that because North America rarely makes the best anything. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, like, for me, you know, sure, the Final Fantasies and all these games are cool and they're fun and everything. But in terms of RPG, you know, in terms of games that let me pick a role mm-hmm. and play it... North America, man, like, it's not even, it's not even close, you know, like, because, like, I'm playing Final Fantasy, and no matter what I do, I'll always be a pansy, because, you know, <laughs> Titus is a pansy, but, like, in, in, um, in, in Skyrim, like, I can be okay. whatever I want to be, Skyrim. you know, I can be Dovahkiin, and I can go, like, stop the dragons, or I can be a scumbag and just rob everybody that I see, you know, even Fable, you know, for all its flaws, wait, Fable is in North America, scratch that, um, it's technically <laughs> Europe. And yeah, which I mean, you would also, if Europe you too. also have to say this, because I'm pretty sure Witcher Three is a European game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't yeah, worry. So I Witcher, know, I the know. North American. Okay. So we got yeah. Skyrim. Okay. Yeah, you got you got your Skyrim, and then you got like your Dragon, your Dragon Age. Dragon Age. So that's two. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. That that's a solid list. Okay, but you want me to, if you want me to list the games or the developers, right? Because I mean, for listing the games, you got Skyrim, Fallout Three, you got Dragon Age, Fallout New Vegas, you've got like you got the first really? Dragon okay. Age too, because you know why not? I'm surprised um, New Vegas is on that list. I thought you hated that game. I've never even played New Vegas. I just heard a lot of good stuff about it. Okay, all right. So we got Skyrim, Skyrim, Fallout. I hear you typing. I'm not typing. I heard you, you typing. About? You are panicking right now. I am not typing. I am not typing. You're right. Lying. Okay. Um, we all okay, then, then you've also you've also got the other side, right? The ones that aren't necessarily role playing games, mm-hmm. but like you've got your Diablos, your action RPGs. Mm-hmm. You've got your um um. One sec. It's 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 tough, right? Because like there are, there are a lot of there are a lot of RPGs. Deus no Deus Ex is. Day Sex, Sex? Is, Day Sex isn't an RPG. Deus Sex is an RPG. It's what are not, you talking uh, about? Well, it's because this is the problem. Because then we 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 flutter into the okay, what is an RPG? Because then it's like it's more like okay, this game has RPG elements. Well, guess what? A lot of games have RPG elements because that's oh, the come basic. on. Deus Sex is an RPG. Uh, I, like, I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. It, sure. I, I mean, like, that. like, Deus Ex is like a prototypical RPG. Yeah, game. it's like a prototypical. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Then you've got your Diablo, you know, yeah. you've got your whole Diablo series. Then you've got your Diablo clones, you know, your Torchlights, your shit like that. Then, you know, like I said, you've got your Fallouts, you've got your Bioware games, you've got your yeah. Knights of the Old Republics, your Jade Empires. Man, what I would give for a Jade Empire sequel. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, man, I honestly think, you know, sure, sure, Japanese RPGs get all the all the shine right up until recently japanese rpgs have always gotten all the shine but oh, yeah i definitely feel like north america um north at least at least of late mm-hmm. definitely if we're talking of late north america hands down come on what has japan given us persona and then you know final fantasy 13 well here's the thing the question doesn't the, the big, biggest thing about this question is that it doesn't say oh is it like you didn't 
say currently. It says which region makes the best RPGs. Yeah. If it was currently, then yeah, I'd be I'd be with you absolutely. But if we're if we're comparing it to like a long list of games, that's you, not fair. They but that's comparing... but that's what I mean. Is that it didn't yeah, like historically, that. it's not even a question. It's Japan, right? Well, that's what speaking. I mean. That's what the question asked. This is which the region? question? No, 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 no. The question says, and I quote. Okay, see, I was given a different. I was given a different question. That's the. That's the. the, the what region makes the best RPGs, right? But that doesn't say now. But at the end of the day, right? <laughs> right now, if I give you the choice between buying a random North American RPG and a random Japanese RPG, which would you pick? I would pick a random Japanese RPG. Oh, okay. Because well, I, mean, I, guess, I guess that's why. That's, that's why you ended up with Final Fantasy Thirteen. <laughs> I never bought. I never bought Final Fantasy I know, I didn't Thirteen. Play no, I know, I know. But it's but, like if I had to choose, I would pick the random JRPG one because it would be a weirder game. And I would enjoy that more. And I know that sounds weird, but it's like, I don't know. But that's my, that's also my taste. Like, I could list, like, you know, and it's not just, you know, you think of games like, you know, Final Fantasy and Dark Souls. Like, I think of, like, Final Fantasy, Dark Souls, Persona, SMT, Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, Xenoblade Chronicles, Secret of Mana, Super Mario RPG, Valkyria Chronicles, Parasite Eve, I Am Setsuna, Valkyria Chronicles, Legend of Dragoon. Like, that's just, that's just a list. That's just a list of what I can think of off the top of my head. And also, I, I guess it's also when I play an RPG, there's there's something that I'm also looking for where it's like, yeah, there's I feel like as far as North American uh, games go, right? Mm -hmm. You've got the more availability to you've got the more availability to like play a blank slate, right? Yeah, which is you know. Yeah, no, exactly. You play the blank slate, and you can you can do your own thing. Like I, when I think of like um like games that give me the blank slate or whatnot, um, I think of like you know like Fallout or um or uh, Skyrim, right? Yeah. Those are great blank slate games. But then, but then I played Mass Effect Two, which is still a North American game. But then I realized, man, I really just like. I like the role playing of being able to talk to my party. I like the role playing of being I interacting with the world, and I feel like I get more of an interesting experience with that, um, with a lot more JRPGs that at, at least the ones I've played. And I I don't know. Like honestly, this isn't like I'm not saying that this is a um, like a cut and dry. Oh, Japan, obviously, right? Mm. I'm not saying that. But I feel like this is, is a hard question because it's like, it's also like, there's different things that people go in for an RPG for yeah. because it's such a big, like, encompassing genre. Like, there's a lot of different types of RPGs, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's difficult because, like, someone might want to go in, I want, I want a really good journey with uh, party members that make me laugh and you know, give me, like, genuine emotion and stuff like that. Sounds like you're more likely to get that from Bioware than from. No, no. Um, I did get that from Persona, though. This and is true, but get, like, I did get that from um, Chrono Trigger. I okay. did get that from Valkyria Chronicles. I did get that from Legend of Dragoon. Okay, I get it, Tana. Right. <laughs> but you see what I mean? You see, like, like that. That's what I mean. But that's the difference: is that you and me, we both go into RPGs with different, looking for different things. You know, so of course it's going to be difficult because, like. If I wanted a more, like... I'm nodding, by the way. Sorry? I'm nodding, by the way. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, because I'm thinking, like, like for example, if I want to go for a more open-ended RPG, then, yeah, no doubt, North America. Like, North America's just got way a way better market for that kind of RPG. But if I'm looking for a game that has really good party members, memorable, like, and, and memorable, like, a memorable character cast and a journey... Then I'll probably go for a JRPG. Like it, it's it's a weird thing. Like it, and I feel like I I will admit though if we are if we are just condensing this argument to which region is making the best RPGs now, then yes I will give the lead to North America, for sure, absolutely. But like I said, this is it's a hard question because you're because it's it's what it, because everybody goes into an RPG for different things. It's like the, it's like how, it's, it's like, for here's a perfect example. It's like how me and my friend Alex, how we play D&D, &D, right? Mm -hmm. I go in, 
I want to be a charismatic guy. I want to have dialogue options. I want to I want to experience the world. I want to role play and act my character out, right? Mm-hmm. Alex goes in and he wants to have tight control over his stats. He wants to have, you know, tight battles. He wants to fight with like precision and comboing and stuff like that. Like he really wants to play for the combat whereas I play for the more the dialogue and the experience and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, but that's what I mean. That's a perfect example where it's like two people can go into an RPG with two different expectations. So it's really difficult. But if I had I would say I would still stand that I feel like um overall I'd say that there is a there's just more variety in uh, JRPGs now that I've actually throw away my prejudice because I did have that prejudice don't get it twisted I had that prejudice way back like uh, four years ago where I said no screw that and then I finally got past that um, but no if we are but if we are saying what re, um, if we are saying um, what kind of RPGs are coming out uh, recently then yes I would say that North America is doing gangbusters for sure okay okay I will yeah because like if we're talking like historically then yeah it's Japan right because yeah. like J- the Japanese have been making video games longer than North America like yeah. it's just they've it's also really... been making they've also uh, been making RPGs long like just the list yeah know? I mean like they've been making everything except shooters longer than North America you yeah. know like um but like and a lot of north american developers really really hit their strides more recently you know you look at bethesda for example no one no one cares about the first elder scrolls game very 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 people very few people care about the second it wasn't until morrowind that things really really i mean you know there was some there was some hype around daggerfall but morrowind was the one that really got the critical acclaim and then oblivion Mm -hmm. was when things blew up right exactly yeah that was when it became a critical and a commercial success you look at bioware Mm -hmm. like bioware's first i mean you know bioware had their games you know they had uh was it never winter nights yeah they had it yeah they had a never winter game yeah yeah but like for them it really blew up with knights of the old republic oh baldur's gate baldur's gate baldur's gate thank you thank you baldur's gate was when it blew up right Mm -hmm. you know you look at it's funny divinity actually divinity is 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 belgian i think yeah yeah so um, that that wouldn't count. <laughs> no, 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 that wouldn't count. But that's no. that's it's weird because it's like yeah, I, then you have to go. Oh, this was this game in North America. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then you know you've got like you've got you've got um, uh, Blizzard. You know Blizzard. Mm-hmm. They had like the Diablo. Okay, Diablo is a little older, but even by but like Diablo compared to Chrono Trigger, for example. You know Diablo is much younger than Chrono Trigger. You mm-hmm. know you look at oh, shit. I forget there was someone. Else. Well, you look at Deus Ex. Deus Ex came out. Yeah. Um, Deus Ex was 3D. Like, like that should tell you how young Deus Ex is compared to a lot of these other games, the original Final mm-hmm. Fantasy. Like, so it's not even if I like just, just, just based on longevity alone. Just for the fact that they've been doing it so much longer, they yeah. are going to be better. They're going to be more good JRPGs than American RPGs. Yeah. But of late. Like, I mean, you know, sure, you have your quirky games every now and then that come out of Japan. And there's, and there's a lot more stuff on the DS that I don't really acknowledge because it's on the DS, right? <laughs> and that, that's the thing, is that, like, I, I don't take that pretense. I say mm. that, like, like for example, I'm having a blast playing um, Shin Megami Tensei 4, and that's a 3DS game. Mm. So, that's the thing. That's the thing. I don't say, oh, portable, portable games don't count. Well, anyway, it's not. It's not. I'm saying portable games don't count. Is that there's just no way I'm going to keep track of DS games because oh, well, yeah. I don't. I don't own a DS. You know, like. Well, yeah. Just, no, no. Exactly. Exactly. I. You know, I'll, I'll see like the the odd Golden Sun. Did you ever play Golden Sun, by the way? Um, I actually never got to play Golden Sun. You should get on Golden Sun. That was one of my favorite RPGs when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you've got the odd Golden Sun here and there that I know of, but in general, you know, Bravely, Bravely Default. Default. Yep, Bravely Default. And Bravely Second. Those are both Japanese, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. I mean, come on, just look at the characters. <laughs> yeah. But, um, um, but yeah, you know, you've got the odd Bravely, Bravely, Bravely Default, Bravely Second that I know of. But in mm-hmm. general, you know, there's a lot of like... And then there's also a lot of quirky, quirky Japanese games that just, that just never, like... Like yeah, no, I to- I don't I do get that. But there is a lot of JRPGs that come out that are just kind of eh. That's just sort of like whatever. It's, and it's then there's also the quality versus quantity quantity argument to be made because Japan releases a lot of RPGs. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I am aware of that. Yes. 
I, I, I mean, I don't have any numbers, but I'd be very surprised if RPGs were not the genre that they make the absolute most of. I'll be very surprised if that is not if it's not at least top three, you know. So, it's, it's so then actually, there's also actually, that benefit. So actually, just, just, um, sir, I was about to say it's actually racing games. Racing games, really? No, no, of course <laughs> just, not. Like, just, I said just, it, and then, and then I thought about it, and I was like, no, he's being sarcastic. <laughs> Japan racing? <laughs> Come on. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, like I'd be very surprised if it wasn't at least in the top three. In fact, if I had to bet right now, I'd bet that it's number one. So like, mm. just by the mere fact that they make so many of them yeah. there'll always be more good ones in japan than in mm. north america right yeah. just you know by by that by by that very nature but i feel like like of late you know yeah, of late I will there's agree. been more there's been better quantity sorry quality in north america you know, when compared to the quantity, there's a there's a better concentration of good RPGs. Although Dark Souls is Japanese, right? Yeah, yes, of course Dark Souls. Of course, Dark Souls is Japanese for <laughs> Is Dark Souls an RPG? Seriously? I, I'm curious though. Like the, you were just it, you were arguing with me. You were arguing with me about Deus about Ex. Deus Ex, and you asked me if Dark Souls is an RPG. Like. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. But this see... is this is the problem where it becomes like RPG mechanics. Like this game has, it has stats. There's weapon upgrades. But but that's the thing is that it's an action RPG. That wasn't why I was arguing for Deus Ex. It wasn't because of stats and weapon mechanics. It was because of well, the fact that you. You play roles in Deus do Sex. Roles. You feel me? Yeah, like, no. you do. You do play roles. You do as as contrary to what people believe. You do play a role in. Um, you do play a role in Dark Souls. You do play a role in Dark Souls Three. Like you do play a role. It's as the what is it? It's the I forget. It's the is it the cindered one? Unkindled ash. The unkindled ash. You play ashen one. Ashen one. You are you're role playing as the ashen one. And but you, that's the thing. That's the only role that you can play. Well, no, you can play the role as the ashen one who decides to uh, forsake the world. You can play the role of the ashen one that decides that the world needs to be keeps on living. You play the role of the Ashen One that he becomes a godlike badass and rules the world with an iron fist. I mean, that's not that's like three endings. That's not like three because because uh, this this is what I mean. This this is this is why I brought up Deus Ex, right? Because mm -hmm. at the start of Deus Ex, I mean, like look at your playthrough right now in Deus Ex, right? I mean, yeah. and this version isn't actually made by North Americans. It's only the original one, I think. Right. Um. But yeah, like look at your playthrough. Right? At the start of the game, you decided that you were going to play a specific type of character, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you stuck to that character for the entirety of the game. That character is completely different from the character that I would probably play if I decided to play Deus Ex. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. But then but, you could also argue that that's the same thing with Dark Souls, where it's like, I want to play a big um, Gronk character that wears heavy armor and ha wields a great sword, and then someone else would be like, I want to play as a magic user and run okay. around in the club. Yeah, I mean, that, that yeah. was that was just my question, you know? Yeah, I was no. like, you know, okay, yeah, no, 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 that, no, that makes sense, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah, so... This, um, is, this is actually a lot tougher of a question than we both initially thought. Yeah, it's a tough question. Um, but but yeah, I I I I'm definitely inclined to. I mean, at the end of the day, the RPG that I have played the most the past year is European. So well, yeah, so it's to, like it's not even North this. American. That's the funniest thing about this argument. <laughs> <laughs> and then like you know, if if all things go according to plan, the next RPG I'm going to play is going to be European as well. So yeah. through all of this. Europe wins. Yeah, you know what? At the end of the day, Europe wins. Let's At the end of the day, that. Europe wins. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that's. I think that's a pretty good answer. Like, um, <laughs> what? What? At the end of the day, Europe wins. Yeah, at the end of the day, Europe wins. I, I like that. How neither of us win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, awesome question. Awesome Jay. question. Um, if uh, I'd love to hear uh, anyone in the comments, uh, well, who do you, what region, um, you think uh, produces the JRPGs? And I guess you can preference it whether or not you want to preference it with uh, overall or recent or time. Or play. both. Or both. Or both. Yeah. Um, because I'm really curious. I feel someone... like overall it's just it's just Japan. No, I don't I don't think there's any discussion. Yeah, there is, there is no argument. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But no, very very good question, J Streets. Very yeah. good question. 
And uh, d- uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you leave a comment in the comment section, we'll make sure to answer it in the next podcast. And as always, this was your host, Women Liberty, and... See you guys next time.